I'm honored to introduce Julie Dane and her solar exhibition. I taught for 30 years and I exhibited for well over 40 exhibitions. And it is one of my favourite places to paint. One reason it's so good to paint is that the accessibility is fantastic. It's very, very beautiful. Geologically, it's one word of it. The mountains have been tossed and then tossed again and then tossed again. So they all come down at strange angles, these wonderful mountains and ridges coming down at different angles and then it'll suddenly change angles. And so that's how all these pictures came about. The ones on this wall were all the ones done on the site. They're the ones that I made each day when we went out. And then the ones on this side are the ones that I did when I came home and I had time to think and I had time to look at my drawings and my paintings and to let that feeling of the place seep in. Because when you're there, you're so busy taking down the information that's there, you don't really get a lot of time to let it seep fully into your bones so that you can just paint it. It was like I'd gone back to the Flinders and I was blissed out as usual. And then the pots came. Now, I've been doing ceramics for about 12 years. When you paint or you do some such thing, is to have another thing on the go because one informs the other. This relates to where we stayed in Grindel's hut and we'd walk outside just at the last bit of light and the moon would be up in the sky and we're surrounded by this mountain range which has kept this rich warm colour in it till the very end. Wonderful. And there's this moon just appears. It's just magical. Because of the land being heaved up so many times, there's different colour soils. So you're driving along, it'll suddenly go to that colour, and then it'll suddenly go to a paler colour, and it changes all the time. I'm mad about light, so everything features how I felt about the light. But it also came, once again, from my imagination or my collective memory of this beautiful part of the world. What I do is I start with the large shapes, like a jigsaw puzzle, and I put the large shapes in, and then I reduce what's happening within the large shapes so that you start coming down to detail. And after a while, the painting starts to talk to you and tell you which way to go, if you're lucky. You know, when they do talk to you, it's terrific. This is made with a clay called BRT and it's got trachyte in it. And if you put your hand in it, you'll find it's very rough. And I thought that was the most suitable clay to do mountains and rocks and things in because it's got this nice rough texture. My art school training was very rigid. That's why I found clay has been so good for me because it allowed me to be much freer. It allowed me to make shapes in three dimensions, any old shape that I like to. It's allowed me to abstract myself when I need to. It's fun. I do have a fairly strong concept of the light because that's how I look at everything. You've got logic going all the time, but you've got totally abstract going at the same time. You've got to have them both going. You've got to have design and colour and whatever, but then you go back to a bit of logic and then you come, you go back and forwards in your head all the time. Thank you to everybody who's been very, very helpful and thank you all for coming.